Welcome back guys, and today we have the AC Infinity Aircom T10 cooling system. So if you don't know anything about AC Infinity, they make cooling systems, cabinet fans, duct fans, as well as rack fans, and many more things. In fact, they're one of the leading companies that actually cools most of the high-end audio video equipment out there on the market currently. And today brings us to the Aircom series cooling systems. But one of the coolest things about this brand is the fact that you can pick up one of these units for just around 50 bucks. Or you can go for something much cheaper than that. And well, based on my experience with receivers and AV processors, I decided to upgrade the cooling system on mine. So as you can see, there's a few different models that these guys make. So before we look any closer at this guy, I want to take a look at some of the models that they have. In fact, I was a little bit, you know iffy on what exact model I wanted here. But nonetheless, they begin with the S6 and end with the S10. But you do get a lot more benefits with one of these than just sticking a fan on top of the receiver. So I'll begin by pointing out that for about $50, you can get a dual S6 rear exhaust 12-inch cooling system from AC Infinity. Now, these are units obviously meant to sit on top of the component that they're cooling. They offer a low profile, but they're also exactly the same size as most of the components out there. So, they lay their models out or differentiate, so to speak, between them by each of them offering a different configuration, so to speak, between the S6 and the S10, with the S6 being a rear exhaust 12-inch, S7 being a top exhaust, and S8 being a rear exhaust 17-inch. The S9 being a top exhaust, 17, S10, a front exhaust, 17, and the T8, a rear exhaust, 17-inch. Don't forget we've also got the T9, which is a top exhaust, 17-inch, and, well, the Aircom T10, front exhaust, 17-inch. In fact, looking at the reviews of the different products they offer, it was clear to me that, well, the T10 offered the most and best positive review feedback. But this is an extremely popular product among people's home theaters, which I even bought into Aircom. I had already decided to buy into AC Infinity's product a few years back, and so I figured this was a no-brainer. Let's check out what's inside the box. So just to be clear, I ordered the item from Amazon, which arrived in two days with the free Prime shipping I had. Nonetheless, you will be given the choice to have the product inside of a box that is concealed with, well, what's inside the box. So I can't necessarily speak for if you order directly off of AC Infinity's website exactly how it'll come. And don't worry, I still paid the retail price. So opening this guy up, immediately right off the bat, you're going to see the face of the unit. Packed with foam in the box. Let's go ahead and pull that out of there. Also inside the box are the instruction manual and power supply. Alright, so you can immediately notice the quality of it, as it does appear to look like a piece of stereo equipment. Nonetheless, it's packed very well, and it looks like we're looking at the bottom of the unit here. Go ahead and flip this guy over here and get this foam off of it. Also nicely wrapped in a bag. Let's get it out of here. Right off the bat, it does really look nice. So I decided to see how this one would work out first, since there's nothing on the top and only front exhaust. On the back of all these units, you do have two USB ports capable of hooking up additional fans and other equipment, as well as the connection for AC power. Right off the bat, I am a little bit concerned about the shape of the AC power supply and the plug itself being able to fit into power conditioners with several different outlets filled. So it looks like due to the shape of it, we are going to sacrifice an outlet possibly next to it if we're using close quarters to connect our components up. So as you can see, it seems to fit nicely on top of my Marantz receiver here. Plus, with its soft rubber feet, I don't have to worry about it scratching the top of the unit at all. And well, with the top being closed, it's perfect for a closed cabinet designed configuration. So let's take a look at how this thing works. And well, you can see what I mean with the 
outlet here. Cord length seems to appear to be exactly six feet. I got lucky and was able to plug it into one of my power conditioners. So upon plugging it in, it immediately starts up and has its own settings to configure to. I can legitimately feel a strong burst of air flowing towards me, and at the same time, I don't notice too much of sound. Obviously, every fan is going to produce some noise, however, this one is actually to a minimum. Considering the fact that it's now three fans cooling my unit instead of, well, just the two. So I can immediately begin to see the probe temperature changing as I watch the unit. But regardless, there was nothing I had to do to first turn this thing on and set it up. The T10 from AC Infinity has three 120mm dual ball bearing cooling fans with pulse width modulation controlled motors to minimize noise. It's also got an LCD thermostat programming with six speed controls, alarm alerts, failure triggers, and memory. It not only protects the components from overheating, as well as performance issues, but also shortened lifespans it prevents against. It produces about 160 CFM of airflow and around 24 dB of noise. So with this thing on at about low speed, I'm getting around 25 dB with my dog moving around in the background. It isn't until we turn it up a little higher that it actually produces a little bit more noise. But at this rate, it's no louder than the internal cooling system already built into your device. So it's definitely not louder than the receiver itself, of course, and the fan operation. But it is ultimately the automatic temperature control. With memory and backup that I decided to upgrade the cooling system in general. You see, one of the, no the most annoying aspects of the bare fans was that I had to keep reaching behind all the components to switch them on and off every time I wanted them on or off. Plus, not to mention the fact that these get dusty as well because they're exposed. So, just taking a look at the uh, fan speeds here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, then I can definitely hear it, but it's still not much louder than, say, a projector running in the background. So based on temperatures so far, odds are we won't have to get anywhere up near that speed. Plus, depending on how you have your components stored will determine ultimately how hot they're going to get sometimes. Well, that and of course how long you've had them on for it as well and how hard they're working. Plus, one of the main benefits of the external or rear USB ports is I can daisy chain additional fans to cool other equipment as well. I will point out the fact that over about the last half hour, that 78 degrees figure hasn't changed much or fluctuated much between 77 and 78 with the fan speed being low. And so, well, it looks like it does a relatively good job at keeping the receiver cool. So, well, how does it rate? So to the very left top button of the unit is the mode button. And we should be able to cycle through an auto smart off, on, and alarm. And actually holding the mode button for three seconds locks the unit's display. It's also an econ button, or eco mode button which turns the display off and keeps the unit running in the background with the program. Mine's currently locked right now. Their instruction manual is easy to read and the unit is extremely simple to set up and use. I'm simply setting my unit up to turn on at 77 degrees. And well, after everything's said and done, 
It gives me peace of mind now that my electronics, I won't ever have to worry about them overheating or reaching behind the TV to turn the fans on and off manually. I say altogether it's a pretty good product and it definitely does the task of which it was designed for. Being one of the leading manufacturers for these kind of devices and one of the most popular, I've seen these on so many different people's receivers and pre-pro processors in their home theaters over the years. I also find it funny that they always use a Marantz receiver in their products for their imaging. And while paired up, yes, it does ultimately look pretty nice and fancy in my opinion as well. So I'll be honest with you guys, it's certainly not 100% necessary that everyone add one of these to their AV receivers. But the AV receivers specifically seem to get hotter than other stereo equipment, since they're certainly performing so many different tasks inside of there. And while it's simply peace of mind, although these are designed for a closed cabinet configuration, I think it'll do the job I need it to do just fine. Well, thank you for watching, guys. For those of you that are new to the channel, make sure to please subscribe if you're into anything audio and video. And next, I'm going to actually be going over all of my 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray top picks over the years. Plus, I can't wait to tell you what else is in store. So thank you for watching, guys, and make sure to take care. As this was the AC Infinity T10 cooling system.